Namaste. Remember in the good old days back in the 50s, if anybody's that old, <laughs> Perry Como on TV in America? Dream along with me. I'm on my way to the stars. <laughs> Don't want to break any windows here, so I'm not belting it out. And besides, it's evening time. It's time for rest and dreams. So what are we going to dream about? <laughs> well, I've been hinting about Shivaloka for some time. And I want to make good on that. I want to reveal what is Shivaloka. Well, we talked about where is Shivaloka. And Shivaloka is not a place in physical space. It's a place in consciousness. The entrance to Shivaloka is at the intersection of dreams and deep sleep. So, in order to enter Shivaloka consciously, you have to penetrate through dreamland. You have to cross the ocean of the mind. And this is only possible with a restrained and trained, well-directed, and well-disciplined intelligence. Where do you get that? By chanting mantras. Okay? So, okay, you chant a mantra for 20 years. Maybe, if you don't make too many offenses to the mantra, he will open up this pathway through the world of dreams. Now, what does that look like? Well, imagine being able to sit down anywhere in a quiet place, a place where you know you won't be disturbed, and either sit down or lie down, make yourself comfortable, um, but not too comfortable because you don't want to fall asleep. What I do sometimes is lay down without a pillow. Because without a pillow, you know, your neck is back like this. It's a little uncomfortable. Just enough to keep you awake. And then I chant Japa. Aum Namah Shivaya. And uh, before that, I was chanting Japa of the Maha Shodashi Mantra, which you can find in this series. And uh, either Shiva or Shiva, either Shiva or Shakti, uh, they're going to bring you gradually into dreams, into Svapna consciousness. Right now, if you're watching this through your senses, through your physical eyes, you are in Jagrat consciousness, consciousness of the dualistic external world. So... The next stage, or the next step on the way to the spiritual world, Shiva Loka, or Devi Loka, Shakti Loka, is through dreams. Chanting your mantra is like a hypnotic chant. Well, it is a hypnotic chant. <laughs> a hypnotic chant that puts you into a certain trance. And this is where you are... You have one foot in waking consciousness and one foot in dream consciousness. Don't the instructions for every mantra say that you should visualize the deity whose names you're chanting or whose praise you're chanting? See? Like the Gayatri mantra. Gayatri is such a popular mantra because it's very effective. But what you should be doing when you're chanting Gayatri Mantra is visualizing the wife of the sun god, the Shakti of the sun god, because she is an emanation from Durga. See? She's a very powerful Shakti. She is really driving all life on the earth. So by worshiping her with this mantra, one goes deep into the dream state and begins to uh, see, th you begin to see things. I mean, what can I say? Look, everybody hallucinates when they're reading, like a good story, isn't it? <clears throat> You're dreaming 
the story, the, the visualization, the film that goes along with the words. Nothing to be ashamed of. Happens all the time. So why do we think that it's something is wrong if we start dreaming while chanting a mantra? Because that's what visualization is. It's a, a hypnotic t a trance, really, overlaid with a specific dream, which is of the form of the goddess of the mantra, or the god of the mantra, the deity. So when we chant Aum Namah Shivaya, we are drawing close to Brahman. That's who Aum is. Brahman is there in every mantra, every Vedic mantra anyway, both at the beginning and the end. So Aum is our goal. We want to go, we want to encounter, we want to become Brahman. Of course, in truth, we already are, but <laughs> we have to discover that. So by chanting this Aum at the beginning of the mantra, we focus the mind on the eventual attainment of Brahman. But in the meantime, or the medium for that attainment is the name of the god or goddess. Namah Shivaya, Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. So, all right, it's like the Red Sea opening for Moses. Huh? Seriously, this is a very powerful metaphor for the mind, the, the barrier of the uncontrolled mind, which is what causes most dreams, opening up and revealing its real nature and submitting to the passage of the wise man, the soul, the aspirant. So what does this look like? Well, you come to visualize not only the form, but very elaborate uh, abode and pastimes of the deity that you're worshiping. So in the case of Shiva, it would be Shiva Loka. After all, Shiva has to be someplace, right? Kailash, or, uh, you know, any of his abodes, Tiruvannamalai, uh, any of these places, you can visualize him together with Shakti. They together are there, it's called a moiety. They are a moiety. In fact, they're the original moiety or couple uh, where the reality is divided into male and female, yin, yang, active and passive and so forth. So the fundamental duality is there. And then from that fundamental duality is coming everything. But here we not, we're not interested in everything that's coming from that. We're interested in the source. We want to know them directly. So we approach through this mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. See, it's a process of obeisance, of approach through submission. Shiva loves this. <laughs> so does Shakti. She just loves it. Doesn't your mom love it when you're submissive and obedient? Huh? Doesn't she just eat it up? <laughs> well, the Supreme Mother is like that too. And when you show, especially when you show that, oh, I want to surrender to Shiva, but I'm not qualified. Oh, this kind of attitude is just you know, like, yum, yum. <laughs> so she will open up the dream, the curtain, you know, the dream that blocks the reality. And you will get a path to go through and attain the feet of Shiva. Well, then what? Huh? I should say, we're going to continue in the next episode, and, and we will. But just to begin, Shiva Loka is a place where all dreams come true. Now, I know it sounds like, you know, somewhere over the rainbow, and in a sense it is, but in this case, it's solidly based on the theory of consciousness. Because if you can master the dream consciousness, svapna, that means you can dream anything you want. 
And if through the resonance of the mantra in your mind, you purify your mind so that the only things you think of are pure and beautiful and loving and, you know, pleasing to Shiva, then he will be greatly entertained by this, you know? And, and let me tell you another thing about this. Whatever form, whatever uh, kind of relationship you want to have with Shiva, in whatever mode of uh, devotion, is fine with him. He's not attached. See? He's not attached. He's pure compassion. So that's what, what we mean when we say boom, boom, huh? boom, boom, hara, hara. Shiva, oh Lord of compassion, please take away all my nonsense. <laughs> and he will. He will. So what he takes away first are your unreal, unrealistic dreams. But when you start to dream of him, Shiva and Shakti, and their pastimes, and their world, that is very pleasing to them, and they will arrange everything so that you can join them and play with them. Because why? They want to have fun with you. They, God just want to have fun. It's true. So any... A relationship, any, you know, positive, beautiful, loving relationship that you can imagine having with God and goddess, either one or both at, uh, at the same time, doesn't matter where one is, the other one automatically is. So um, whatever kind of relationship you can imagine having with them in pure love, they will manifest to your inner eye. And you don't even have to make the effort to imagine it. It's just going to pop into existence. That's the nature of Shivaloka. And ultimately, Shivaloka is Brahman. So there's no consciousness, no form, no motion, no activity, no energy, no nothing. And, and that is Sushupti. Sushupti is the void with a capital V. Uh -huh emptiness, where nothing can happen. But the boundary between Svapna and Sushupti is not a stone wall. Huh? If there's a wall, it's because we put it there, not him. If there's a door and we find it locked, it's because we locked it and <laughs> forgot where we put the key. So, that's why it takes this work. That's why it takes this sadhana, which involves mastery of the different stages of consciousness. First of all, by observation, being able to locate and identify them in yourself. And then by gradually introducing awareness into dreams, lucid dreaming, you can call it, you get to the point where you can dream anything you want especially while you're falling asleep and just waking up. And so if we develop this ability and then use it to dream devotional dreams about Shiva and Shakti, oh, they're just going to be so pleased. I mean, you know, this is why they do all this stuff, you know, just to have fun with their devotees. So, of course, Shiva is the greatest joker. <laughs> So watch out, he will play tricks on you. It's all in good fun, though, you know. And at that level, nothing can hurt you anyway. So what are you worried about, you know? This is yoga. This is the real yoga. This is the yoga that leads to liberation, not just samadhi. Huh? I mean, samadhi will happen. Don't worry about it. Now, when you develop the requisite uh, conditions, it'll just happen. Same with Kundalini and all that stuff. But what you should be concentrating on is the path. How do you get to that point? How do you get qualified? How do you get purified? And how do you get the qualities and the thoughts and the emotions that lead to 
complete enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.